We said, listen, patrols uh, are fantastic vehicles. We just don't have a massive footprint for them in South Africa. And it's a shame because the old 4.2 Nissan patrols, the, the ones I drove on driven to extremes. The Y62. The, the Y61. 60, solid uh, truck. Brilliant. A really solid 4.2 diesel, brilliant vehicles, real workhorses. So this vehicle, 105 series, again it's for fat and family. You seem to lean more to the 105 than the 100. Look, the 105's got the solid axle. So if we can get a solid axle for me, it, is, it does give a um, sort of more robust axle. It gives a bit more ground clearance. We've spoken about the differences between the two. Um, it's not that the 100 series doesn't work with the independent front suspension. They do, and a lot of people use them. And you've got great motor choice. Um, I just like simplicity. So if I can, I do. So really on this vehicle, um, we looked and said, it needs to carry two spare wheels. So it's got a rear carrier, the Gobi X rear carrier, which I, I think is one of the best built on the market. Uh, in terms of weight, uh, can, you, can you put a weight uh, on, on the Gobi X carrier? I don't have it in my head, no. But you know, any of these carriers are built, Gobi X have designed theirs to be, uh, they, they design it really efficiently with the amount of steel they use and, and the weight they have to put on. You know, some of them I've seen very thick, very heavy, and just weld it together. And you lift them off and you think, my gosh, that's massive, you know? But this is, this is phenomenal. No I, tire covers I on this? Is that just the so we would, we would put tire covers on. Not, not more, more um, tire covers really to protect the tires from the UV on the sun. But again, you've got nice storage here. Mm. So we do put tires on. Um, we go for the solid rims. You can see we put two. Even lovely skiddies you've got in there. Yep. And as what you'll see here, we put two valve stems. Okay, one so you can put a tire monitor on and the other one so that you can you can just power up, air up the tires up and down. And, and, you know, these are 265 by 65s. 285. Uh, so the 285, yeah, that seems to be the, uh, quite a popular tire as well. Yeah, 285 is a great tire choice. 33 inch. Uh, you know, it's, it's a big, on these trucks, it just sits nicely on the road yeah. and feels good. And then here we have our gadget arm, shovel, high lift jack, and then we everything is tied on yeah, and locked on. Very professional with the rear though. So what I like about this system is it has a big gas shock on it. So when you open up, let's say I open up here, I've got a clamp. The clamp pulls the arm down, yeah. so it's got that grip as well. It's got a little safety catch behind, which I lift up. And I just control it because the gas shock will actually so I actually control it out, okay? And now I've got the two wheels. Spot. So look, it's any any time you're putting a rear bumper and two wheels on the back, yeah. you're putting a lot of weight on the back. Yeah. But it's it is an efficient place to put them because when these are closed, I could actually lock these two wheels together. And if I lock them together, people can't get in the back. <coughs> and in terms of weight, and say 60 plus people, how do you get around some of the weight issues of actually picking up the tire? Yeah, that's a good point. On some of the vehicles where people have got hernias or they, they can't physically pick up the vehicle. They have a side awning. They can open up the side awning. Or we've made a bar you pull out with an egg and a little pulley system. And it sounds crazy, but you put a little pulley system made, made from almost what the climbers use, the rock climbers use. This was the Venetians used back in the day. Yeah. And you just have a pole that comes out, a leg, perfect support, hook it up, wheel it over, pull it up, just wiggle it into place. So you can make a bag. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, you'll see. So on the back here, will be vinyl on the rear. Must be good for security. That's that's the main reason. You know, you, you sometimes if people want to spend the money, we'll out take sight, the glass. Out of mind. Well, out of sight, out of mind. We take the glass out and plate it. But actually, this works. You know, you you put black vinyl on here. It just takes it out. People can't see in. Um, yeah. And you've got the swing doors here, no barn doors. It's quite nice to be there. You can sit on here, and you can get, make a GNT right when you get to camp. Because <laughs> you want your GNT. <laughs> <laughs> I see you've got the fridge uh, and everything. So, in a, in a setup like this with four people, it's really difficult. You know, you're, you're using your fridge in the back, um, you're using the table. So, we have a slide out table here, and then you've got 
light up access to bags here. Okay. So I start off by putting a stainless steel plate on the tailgate, just so you can work on it, you can clean it. It's like a table. That's what I want to use. Okay. Fridge inside on a slide that you can put out. Daniel, okay. that's, that's Rufy's favorite fridge. A good fridge. <laughs> I'm not. Look, I, we use Engel, we use National Luna. Yeah. Those are the two fridges that I really feel are really good. There are a lot of fridges on the market. They're not, they're not all rubbish. Some very good brands that actually work really well. But this is tried and tested in the bush. These are tried, it's such a good fridge. And this yeah. seems like a lot bigger setup than I've seen in other trucks. Obviously, with the four people, you need more storage space. Well, look, I mean, this is a 60 liter fridge, so yeah. this does take up more space. Yeah. You know? I and mean, in terms of, the, of, of the, the cupboards and, and that kind of, it seems like a bigger setup here than some of the other trucks. Yeah, I, I tend to say to people, you're living out of this. Your fridge, your drawers, you know, food, cooking pots, cutlery and bits and pieces you need, slide out table. So you've got a table that you can slide out. You know, so now I don't have to unpack the car. If I'm stopping for a coffee, we can drop this down and make a coffee, or we can pull the table out and use the table. Table space is underrated. You always need table space. And sometimes we put two tables, one on top, so you can pull two of these out. You know, it just gives you great. You're preparing food or you want to sit and work at a table. Very, very valuable. You know, lighting, so you've got lights. So you always look at lights. lights yeah. I wouldn't say disco lights, <laughs> you know, but you've got different lights and you can put them on and off. This is quite, a, this is an, a, a nice clean setup and you've got so much storage space. So we've got a drawer, okay. So you just put low stuff in, which is very useful. And then we've got nice big drawers, okay, that you can pack stuff in. So, as you say, you want to live out of this as much as you can. Okay? You can pack some stuff. The, the biggest challenge you've got with a setup like this is you've still got to carry spares. Yeah. You've still got to carry some repair gear. You've still got to carry recovery gear. And that's where the challenge comes in. You know, in a vehicle like this with four people, that's why I like a vehicle like this for two people. Yeah. Because two people, you've got the middle section where you can build storage. You can build a double volume storage platform where in place of the rear seat and now you can get that heavy stuff in behind there and you can even move the fridge to behind the passenger seat so it does depend on how you, you do there's a compromise it's not perfect yeah but it's a compromise this is for shorter trips these guys are doing you know come out three week trips two three four week trips and it'll be interspersed dispersed with staying in lodges and stuff like that put duffel bags on the top well, yeah, I mean, I, I would probably say the clothing, some of it will have to go in the roof box, okay? Um, you're going to need to put some of your storage in here. We've got a small shelf up top there, and that's just for small items you can put in. It's not a big shelf. And it's designed to take some plastic boxes inside here. So the plastic boxes actually allow you to just put some spares and repairs and you know, recovery kit, can, you can put stuff under the seat. We've got two water tanks in here. Okay, so you can actually, there are two plastic water tanks that we put in here, 40 liters. So they've got 80 liters of water and one tap there and one tap here. Both gravity feet. So try not to put pumps in. If you want to take a purifier, take a small handheld purifier. You know, take something like the Lifesaver, there are different models. Take a purifier source. I'm not a fan of taking bottled water and buying bottled water. All that plastic yeah. gets wasted. Take a purifier. There's enough on the market you can use, and they're really good. And you know, the amount of water you're drinking is a lot less than what you need to wash and cook and stuff like that. You know, stuff rattling around. Well, you know, you get invariably bottles break these thin ones. Yeah. You stuff them in everywhere, and eventually you've got mess. And you, your beer? Do you take tins? Yeah, good question. You only have to take tins once or twice and not pad them properly and find that tins have worn through. You've got to be so careful. You know, any, any time you put tins or of any sort, be it tins of food or anything, into a drawer or a box, you're going to remember there's movement. Uh, if you, and then movement destroys labels and a beer rubs against each other and those thin aluminium tins, it doesn't take much before they rub, it, rub through. But if you pack it properly, you can take tins and just put a thin layer of something between them. This plastic white sort of packing material, bubble wrap, anything. And it'll last. It really will. It doesn't take much just to take away that rubbing. So it really is about how you pack stuff. I find more people throw gear into their car 
and they don't really have an appreciation that you've actually got to pack this stuff really carefully. Your frying pan. You know, we, most of us will take a non-stick frying pan and then you go and put a pot on top of it. Well, you know, a number of roads are going to come back yeah. and you're going to see a nice, and that non-stick pan is no more non-stick. Yeah. You know? So again, you will see in a lot of the vehicles we build for higher companies, people care less about the kit. So it's bagged and it's separated as much as you can to try and get people to look after it. And that's, not, that's often because they don't understand what's going to happen to the kit while you're driving on these bad roads. But when it's your own kit and you've taken on a few trips and you unpack your own kit and you say, gee, this got really damaged. You know? So camera gear, dust, dust is your big thing. You know? These vehicles are pretty dust proof, but yeah. any, you know yourself, you know, any camera gear. The double cabs, you know, the, the, the trays can be dust machines. If yeah. not, you've, got to, you know, you've got to work hard when you've got canopies on the back of vehicles to make sure they're dust proof. And you can get different devices in some of the canopies that pressurize the canopy and push the dust out. But that doesn't stop your camera gear, which is valuable, expensive gear, computers. So you, you want that kept not in the back here, you want it kept inside the cabin area. Where it's kept cool, it's dust proof. Probably less less vibration perhaps. Yeah, well, yeah, less vibration. You know, if you if you put a, a computer in the back and it's yeah. banging on the edge like yeah. it's not gonna do much good. No. But if you put it in the seat pocket behind the seat. Everything needs its place. Everything needs its place. And I think once you've, once you've actually figured out where everything goes, so for me the starting point is look at what you're going to take in the car. Okay, what, what equipment? Now you're going to think about where am I going to put this gear? How am I going to access it? And then consider what you need. And then maybe start your trip with the essentials and buy some of those luxuries as you find you need them. And then you add up and you build it up nicely. And it's going to take a good few trips to build up your experience and to build up your, your knowledge of what you want and where everything is going to go. You're going to repack the car 10 times and then you're going to go, I need this here, my tire monitoring, my tire pressure gauge. I want it in my side pocket. I need it often. I have a little brush so when I get out in the car and I'm finished at the end of the day, I can brush the car, clean out. You know? I, have a, I have a thing about people who, who, who just let the cars become an absolute dustbin inside. Mm. It's just lack of care. And in fact, you get into some of the cars and you look and you think, why would you live like this in your home? You wouldn't do that in your home. So why do you do it in the car? You know? <laughs> and it's just because it's lack of care. So have a little rubbish bin. Be, be mindful. And you get out the car at night, if you keep the car clean, you tend to have that whole approach of mm. looking after the car. Now, when you're going on a year-long trip, it becomes more important to look after the car, more important to check things, more important to maintain things. And that's, that's what takes a little bit of routine and I guess it's respect for the vehicle that's going to take you. And respect for yourself. You know, for yourself too. You know, and I think uh, as we say, with more and more people looking at a way of life, living out of a vehicle, be it a full drive or be it a van or be it, you know, people are looking for that ability to get out into some amazing places and now they've almost been given permission to work remotely it's playing in our hands to go traveling and working from the vehicle we just got to do it more efficiently so i mean how much better can it get than some of your bosses happy for you to work from home home can be a van it could be a truck it could be a four-wheel drive happy days